July 13th today. And we're off on another ride. It was just about uh, 4.30 in the afternoon. Yeah, so 16 hours of the day anyways. Thereabouts. Uh, and we're off on another ride. And another conversation. And this is sort of, a, a, we'll place things in context. That we have a contextual understanding of things that are going on in history. Is that modern history sits within the reality of the whole of the Holy Roman Empire. And a large chunk of the East has been sort of deleted from history. And this has been largely at the hand of the West. The hands of the West. Uh, in order to create a particular view, a so-called European leading view of the world, history is like that, uh, language is like that, this is what they, the, the, the base language for everything is known as the proto the, 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 the proto Indo-European language. Now, the proto Indo language you go back into uh, older older texts, like older particularly older dictionaries, you will not find the proto uh, Indo-European languages. What you will find is you'll t find the theory on uh, Aryan nation and Aryan race. And this is fundamentally a white uh, Germanic understanding of things. It's not until you get... And this is what sort of Lionel brought about. He kind of made a mistake. The Spanish aren't specifically white. They are a mix of Berber and European but there's been so much uh, Berber in there, so much of the African, that it's hard to, it's really difficult to place the label white or Caucasian. And that's what the white is, the white is Caucasian. And as anything west of the Caucasus mountain, the Caucasian comes from the work, from the, uh, from the uh, mountain, mountainous regions known as the Caucasus. This is where the term white comes from, ca ca Caucasian. Anything west of the Caucasian mountains uh, was considered to be white, particularly, and that was typically Europe. Uh, but again, these theories and the, geo the, the, sort of the geographic borders are not set in stone, there is a lot of, uh, in terms of villages that sit on the border ranges, there's a lot of intermixing between the different border villages, so the borders that define the Caucasus and you know, the, the, the Europeans and the Asians is not well set, it's not well defined, and there's very little known about uh, the sort of the non-Europeans because a large chunk of the history uh, was destroyed. I mean, you look at the Battle of Hastings, which was in 1066. Uh, you look, see at other different sources, and I found this at the actually NIH's library that there was significantly uh, that, the, that the Roman Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic armies, didn't do a crusade just in the Middle East, but they did it all across Europe. So the Battle of Hastings was not unusual to, to England. What they did is they went after any group that wasn't within the Roman Catholic sphere. And they pulled all the Christian groups at the point of a sword into uh, Roman Catholic Christianity. It had to be that type. And no other type was accepted. So this was the creation of Europe. The creation of Europe sits with the creation of the Holy Roman Empire was neither was neither well, was neither holy nor Roman. It wasn't actually Roman. The uh, 
these were these were what they call loosely called the Germanic tribes. But even there, the Germanic term Germanic tribe isn't proper because if you look at the history of Germany, you'll find that that, uh, uh, that Munich was not part of Germany. Munich was part of Bavaria, and that you had different towns, different you, you had a separation of kingdoms uh, in what is now called Germany. This includes Austria. Uh, you had the uh, before this, you had the Austro-Hungarian Empire. In other words, you had a mix of geographies that one has to bring into the context of today's discussion in terms of what they talk about. Well, what do you mean by European? Or what do you mean by Christian? Because it wasn't all monolithic before. And just so you know, the, 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 the Protestants, will never, Protestants will never say that they're Catholic. And there's a divide there. And even amongst the Protestants, still, there are a number of different... Uh, Protestant groups. So you can't simply say that Protestant is all one thing. It has to be, and then this is where, where the issue in terms of definition comes in. Uh, and this is what Lionel's having a hard time with. Understanding that the non-monolithic world has a good history behind it. And this was picked up lately by the humanists. Who want a conceptual world of anything that, that anything you can think of is real. As long as you feel it's good, it's good. This is the model, this is the, this is the, uh, the morals of society today. That anything that, anything that feels good is good. If it feels bad, it's bad. This is the morals of hedonism. And it's right there, early on, before Karl Marx, within Voltaire. But again, what happens, none of the stuff, none of the history, if you listen to the pundits, none of the history ever comes into the discussion. And yet, well, it needs to be there, but the thing is, <laughs> I watch my cartoons and, uh, and studying is boring. Learning something is boring. Everything has to be fun. Well, unfortunately, not everything is fun. There are... Realities that aren't fun, things go on, that go on that aren't fun, and we sort of have to live within these understandings that, well, that not everything is going to be fun out there. There is going to be some element of work to it. I mean, athletes understand this, that they're going for the Olympics or anything that's, that's spectacular. They have to train, they have to work hard for it. I mean, I mean, this concept of working hard seems to be completely lost. Then again, I'm a nerd and I like studying. That's part of my fun. That's why my gaming is the way it is. I'm doing is more like a, more like a scavenger. Hunt. 
not all the information is readily available. You pick it up in pieces. So if you're a person who likes puzzles, you like like these large few thousand piece puzzles, if you find that enjoyable, then research is up your is, is right up your alley. But the thing is, if you go into an institute or a university, uh, it's gonna be Uh, restricted because you can only do what the institute wants you to do. There are certain boundaries and limits. It was June 13th, it's quarter past. Editing. Not bad, I'm up for <laughs> going back to my place now. Hey, have a good day. Yeah, oh. uh, it's about uh, 20 past 9, so, well, quarter past 9. So it's uh, 21 hours and uh, 15 minutes into the day. I missed the rain when I got into my place and started reading. And it looks like I missed the rain on the way back as well. It seems to be nice outside. Although it's starting to get darker out at 9 o'clock. Fix the mirror. talking about the perceptions of things compared to the realities. And everyone has sort of these perceptions and misconceptions. And this is uh, talking about Lionel LeBron's uh, description of Latinos, Hispanics, and those originating from Spain, some, some aspect or another as being white, where if you look at the history of Spain, you begin to realize that white, the Caucasian, is, is basically confined to um, to Germany and France, and that region there, that's, that's, that's the white area, uh, and it goes as far east as the uh, Caucasus Mountains, and then stops there, but then that, you're getting into Asia after that point. The Caucasus are the dividing point between Asia and Europe.
So when they talk about Caucasoid, they're talking about primarily uh, those people west of the Caucasus Mountains. Dividing line between Asia and Europe. But here's the problem. I've got some cars going fast and others going slow. So it's difficult to gauge the time in between. So I've got sirens going on. Huh? There we go. We got one, one car left on the left. And then we can go. Okay. Between our quite heavy discussions and conversations, yeah, the, the, the rules of the road that have to be followed, you have to have the attention on the road. Yeah. Problem with the summer, nicer weather, but occasionally you get bugs in the mouth. Clearly you go by trees. Someone's got a patio going outside on that thing. On uh, the uh, strip mall, that is a restaurant in there. Uh, anyways, uh, the Europeans are really confined to a small place. They're basically, if you want to go into biblically, they are there biblically. Biblically, they're the, uh, they're the Galatians, uh, the people of Gaul. And that's particularly France, uh, what is now France and Germany. That kind of defines what Europe is. What happens is in Italy and Spain is you have a large influx. You have, still have a large population of ancient Greeks. Uh, and Spaniards. I mean, that's it. And Arabs. North Africans. You see, the North Africans uh, did have us have the ability to travel, and you have the North Africans, as you do the Romans, reaching all the way to England. This is how you had uh, Joseph of Arimathea, the uh, person who took the body of Christ down from the cross. How does he end up in England? Well, that's because uh, by sea travel you could get there. They knew about England. So England, you know, from the time of the Roman Empire, uh, was actually known about. And some will even argue that, they're, they're, that they, they were known about by the ancient Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians could, could have sailed to, uh, to England. And say, what is now England? So you have a large history there in which to place things within context. But the Spaniards, in terms of the whiteness, don't come into play in terms of the Germanic sense of things, in terms of the Protestants. So they talk about well, the Protestants, those who are primarily those from Gaul, those from Gaul. Uh, those are the English and the Germans. Uh, this has to do with the, the monk Martin Luther and Lutherans and so on and so forth. Uh, the Presbyterians all came out of uh, Germany and uh, England as Protestants, but the ones that remained Catholic under the papacy were uh, France, Spain, and Italy, and they're the ones who actually formed the core of the Holy Roman Empire, and so you're going back, in terms of the whiteness, you're going back to the Holy Roman Empire, and this is where you get a large chunk of the so-called whiteness, but it's really the European understanding, and once again, Dostoevsky takes care of this brilliantly, brilliantly, and it's in the chapter of uh, Brothers Karamazov, the chapter of the Grand Inquisitor, and the one line that I liked a lot that sort of sums things up, we will sell them slavery as freedom. In other words, the Roman Catholic Church is at the core of a lot of this stuff. 
a lot of the stuffing you see going on, a lot of different things, they were sort of, as I said before, the Jews were always the middlemen. The, 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 the Jews have always historically been the middlemen. So who was the one on top ordering everything? Well, it's the Roman Catholic, it's the papacy. The papacy is at the core of, of, of the, uh, well, the Gnostic world. And the entirety of Voltaire and humanism is nothing but a work to keep people away from the Gnostic treasures. And that's actually a lot to be a lot to be said for that because there are huge treasure hunts going on for lost gold. And I'm not going to get into any detail in it, but we, you know, for those who want to sort of understand this, the the Roman Catholic Church is the matrix. But the Roman Catholic Church is in itself within the matrix because it's more of a continuation uh, of the work uh, done in Kabbalah. So in other words, the work of Father was never anything more was never anything more than Kabbalism. And more and because there were a lot of different types of Kabbalism, each each rabbi had his own interpretation. Uh, Roman Catholicism was one interpretation of it. But it happened to be sufficient that it titled itself Antichrist. The official title of uh, the Roman Catholic Church is the Vicar of Christ, which means to take the place of Christ. And the Greek term antis, where we get the word anti from, is not opposition, but really means to take the place of. It's the Greek word antis. And so what happens is you have the Pope taking the place of Christ, of, taking the place of Christ. And that is specifically the definition of the Antichrist. So here you have someone calling himself the Antichrist and saying, okay, this is what we're going to do. And so you, you, you set the environment now for the Antichrist. situation we're kind of sitting in. So, we, so the history is quite significant. There's several layers of history in terms of the context that we have to sort of situate ourselves in. And then begin to unravel from there. So we do have now, as a, in terms of a puzzle, we have a bit of a structure that we can work with. And so now it's a matter of filling in the points within the structure uh, to, to sort of fill out the puzzle in every... You, you, further. There is no completion of the puzzle. But you can fill it out to its best point. 